some people go into writing their book with the theme already in mind like they know what they want this book to be about they know what points and what lessons and what themes they want this book to convey whether or not they know how to go about doing that is a whole other story for a whole other video but I just wanted to talk a little bit about themes and how I pick themes if I pick themes and just how those themes start to come about in my writing I have never been much of a critical reader so you know when you grow up in school and you have those English classes where you're reading all these books from like a hundred or two hundred years ago of course that's if you have even read the book or if you just want to like spark notes or something and so you get to class after you read the book and your teacher might ask you something like what's the theme of the book what symbolism do you see here you know and I've never been one who's able to answer those questions there was a girl in one my 12th grade English class I remember and she was I always really admired how she was able to pick up on themes like that like she would say something and it would sound so intelligent and it would sound so like how did you even like figure that out but I always remember thinking that when it came to looking for symbolism and themes in books it seemed like everybody was reading too much into it oh the color blue symbolizes feelings of hopelessness okay I don't see that at all you know how did you get that from that look like, of course like I said I'm not much of a critical reader and so I wasn't really thinking about these things so deeply but it always just seemed like these themes that the off that the te that our teachers were reaching for were reaching they were reaching real far for these themes so when it's come to my own writing and I re I haven't realized this until maybe about a year or two ago like so very relatively recently in my writing career um, I noticed that some of my stories actually do kind of have themes in them and of course they came about through no intention of my own it was one of those things where like an idea just starts to kind of grow the more you write it and maybe you know that's in the back of your mind but you're not thinking about it very consciously but once you look back and you read the story and like okay I'm kind of getting vibe, this sort of vibe from it like this seems to be a story about such and such so my book Stormcloud which I'm still revising <laughs> Um, the first time I, the first a thousand times that I wrote different bits and pieces of that story or different variations of that story, I was not thinking about theme. I didn't care about theme. I was just of the mindset like I'm not going to put a theme in this book. Is it bad if I don't, if my book doesn't have a theme? Does it have to have a theme? But if there's one thing I learned from my English class, it doesn't matter whether you put the theme in the book. A reader's going to pick up on something. <laughs> Looking at Stormcloud, after maybe one or two revisions of it I started to realize like this seems to be a book about a girl who's sort of coming to terms with herself like she's gaining confidence she's um, coming to terms with her identity um, she's learning how to sort of navigate socially and like you know she's learning to come out of her shell you know these are all things that I personally could relate to I talked about this a lot in one of my videos about creative depression and just how me wanting to do justice for my character kind of made me made it really hard for me to get started writing the book um, so I can link that video down below but you know these are th themes that I could relate to in my own life and I guess that's kind of how they started to come about in this book because these were things that I wanted to that I've kind of always thought about like I'm a really introspective person so I'm always thinking about something even if I don't want to be thinking about it um, so at least I'm thinking about, you know, how I'm an introvert and how I've always been very shy. And so in writing this book with a character who shares some of these qualities, it just, I guess it was only natural that it would come out somehow. Once I realized that those themes were present in that book, again, by accident, then when I went back and did another revision, I sort of embraced it. Like I decided that, okay, now it's intentional. You know, I'm going to revise this story with these, now that I know that these themes are present, I'm going to revise this story intentionally putting these themes here so I might lay a bit more groundwork to make those themes come about more prevalently or I might plant a few seeds to have that theme kind of spread out throughout a little bit more for another book of mine pitchfork which I've also talked about a little bit on this channel um, that one was a little bit harder I guess in figuring out the theme so once I figured out that there was a theme in Stormcloud I kind of felt like okay there's probably a theme in Pitchfork so what is it you know <laughs> so I'm kind of looking at it like trying to suss out the theme and it's not always obvious you know sometimes it takes a lot of thinking about or sometimes you know maybe just the way that I wrote it because it's a fairly early draft you know maybe the theme just hasn't come out very much but I started to realize um, especially on my most recent draft that I wrote th that I was writing at this time last year actually um, <laughs> Um, that's when I started to realize, okay, this is a theme. It's another story about a girl sort of finding herself, but she's sort of realizing that she doesn't fit in 
in many many ways <laughs> where she, in her location like she doesn't fit in at all and I know that's something that a lot of people can relate to and so that's kind of come out in this book there's this theme about you know who you were is not who you are now um, and so those are things that I've kind of been excited to play with as I've gone back and like looked at like done revisions on it or even just like um, have plotted ideas you know trying to figure out where to go with the story in terms of like future revisions because there's always another round of revisions at least that's how it feels right now in this cyclical I'm telling you it's just circles I'm going in circles with these books <laughs> last night um, in order to help myself fall asleep something about reading in general just makes me a little tired after like a, a chapter or two and so I was reading um, Pitchfork actually and I knew that as I opened up the document on my phone I knew I was gonna regret opening it up because right now I'm working on Stormcloud the last thing I need is to be thinking about Pitchfork and feeling like I can't wait to go back to that story. Like, of course, I always feel can't wait to get back to that story, but um, I don't need to tempt myself, okay? <laughs> so, but anyway, the point of this is I opened up Pitchfork and I was reading the first couple of chapters and then I skipped a few and I read a chapter there later. And it was interesting just to see, like, like since it's been a couple of months since I've read it, you know, you kind of go back with it with this sort of fresh eyes. Like, you don't remember every detail of what you wrote. Um, which is, you know, the point of taking a break. And so I was reading it and I was like, okay, I can see the elements of this theme kind of coming about, you know? And it's not, a, I'm not always thinking about it in terms of a theme per se, because a theme sounds so literary and I'm not writing anything literary, I'm writing fantasy and adventure. So, you know, but those types of things can still pervade those genres. Um, and I think that's really the cool thing about, you know, writing. Especially if you stop to think about your writing, you know, you start to see things that you didn't always expect. And if you lend that draft to somebody else to read, you know, sometimes they can tell you what it's about. I remember in my, I took a nonfiction class for, as part of my creative writing minor in college. And I had never written anything nonfiction before. Well, I guess except for like some essays in middle school or something. But um, not seriously and not intentionally. Um, and so I didn't think I would like this class, but I actually really, really loved it. And I remember I wrote a story about my internship in New York. And I wrote the story, you know, I was super, super proud of it. And then I brought it to class to be workshopped after I'd edited it a couple of times. And my teacher said, this seems to be about a girl that's sort of finding her way in New York. Like, she's not from this place. Her family is from this place, but she's not. And she's sort of trying to get her sea legs. I don't think she said sea legs, but me, the nautical fanatic, is throwing that in there, of course. Um, so, and then when she said that, I was like, holy crap. I didn't even realize that. That was just like a super, like, cool moment. And then afterwards, because in, in a workshop, you're not allowed to speak until afterwards. And so afterwards, I was like, I'm so glad you said that because that was something I hadn't even realized. And that was one of the things that... Um, I needed to work on in a revision is that that theme was sort of just planted in a couple of sentences here and there but it wasn't super prevalent throughout. I went back and revised it with that theme in mind and so I'm thinking how can I convey this feeling of trying to fit in and trying to you know find my place in New York like how can I do that you know what sentences can I add is there any other sort of stories I can tell within this nonfiction essay that will help get that point across. So that's been my experience with theme, I guess. Um, I'm really excited to like go for it in the future and you know work more on this. There's something about finding the theme of your book. Once I discover what the theme of the story is, I sort of feel closer to my story. You know, it's like if you meet somebody and they and then you find out uh, some deep dark secret about them, or you find out about something that they went through in their past, you feel a bit closer to them, that they were able to sort of trust you enough to let you in on that information. That's sort of how I feel about discovering the theme of my story, you know? It's this thing that was sort of lurking, probably from the birth of the idea, you know, whether I realized it or not, that was sort of a story that I wanted to tell. And so, it just makes me feel super close to my story. It makes me feel super proud that I was able to even kind of do that by accident. I can't wait to see what themes I write about in the future, you know. They say, I don't know if the phrase goes, life imitates art or art imitates life. I think it's life imitates art, you know. But um, in this case, I'm going to say art imitates life. Because, like I said, I wrote about themes that I could relate to in my own life. Some themes that other people can relate to in their lives, you know. And so I'm just curious to see what sorts of adventures I'll go on in my personal life in the future that will find their way into my writing. 
so that's all i got for today thank you guys so much for watching down below let me know what you guys think of themes in your own writing and whether or not you go into your writing intentionally with a theme in mind or if that's something that you sort of discover along the way i'd be super interested to know give this video a like hit subscribe and also hit the bell notification icon so you can be notified when i post new videos and i will see you next time toodaloo Oh